walk, the way you talk, what you wear, and so on and so forth has been programmed for you to do so. And you just look at the innocence of it all and not understanding how powerful that is for somebody to control the way you walk, think, speak, your your actions, your daily life, this culture that we call hip hop that's controlling our community. So they had to test this whole thing. And um, we all remember, if you study pop culture, study music, and you go back and look, there was the mass hysteria craze. And that was the goal of this whole 440 hertz frequency to cause mass hysteria so they can see if it worked. And they tested it out on basically their own people. So when you had the Beatles craze, that was mass hysteria. You had girls going crazy and people pulling their hair out and crying and fainting because of mass hysteria because the music was put to 440 hertz. It's the same thing with Elvis. The frequency in the music was put out there to basically cause arousal, to cause, you know, stimulation and to cause people to go into mass hysteria, which we have seen this a whole bunch of times. Seen girls lose their mind over the sight of a person. It's the same stuff that's being played out today. Now, another article. On August 31st, 1957, hysterical crowds trampled people, including Canadian reporter John Kirkwood, who wrote, It was like watching a demented army swarm down the hillside to do battle in the plain. When those frenzied teenagers stormed the field, Elvis and his music played a small part in the dizzy circus. The big show was provided by Vancouver teenagers transformed into writhing frenzy idiots of delight by the savage jungle beat music. A hard bitter core of teenage troublemakers turned Elvis Presley's one night stand at the Empire Stadium into the most disgusting exhibition of mass hysteria and lunacy this city has ever witnessed. Colonel Parker also enjoyed reading the accounts of the riot the next day. And he was Elvis' manager, it says here, it turns out that Colonel Tom Parker, or Colonel Tom Parker, whatever you want to call him, Elvis's manager was suspect for illegally joining the U.S. Army illegally as a European immigrant. He broke his co-management contract with Hank Snow for exclusive control over Elvis's career, developed Presley's contract with RCA, think about that, and worked under the alias of Colonel or Colonel Tom Parker, a name that he secretly stole from his army base commander, Captain Tom Parker. His real name was Andreas Cornelius, or Andres, whatever you want to call it. Andres Van Kujak, however you pronounce that. Thus, the Empire Stadium riot pleasing to Parker was most likely a successful U.S. military RCA experiment to induce mass hysteria, especially since RCA, according to Tobias, was a major participant in the Rockefeller Foundation funded research to musically produce this precise audience impact. So what is it telling you? It's telling you straight up what they did. They took control of music, as I said before. And it's not a coincidence what happened with the music industry and how we ended up with hip-hop and everything that that entails. They already did the experiments on how this frequency works. And they seen that it worked on, you know, teenagers. It worked on people. And um, when you have a even more deeply spiritual people such as us, black folks, who take music, you know, to the soul, like music makes people cry, it's an emotional thing. And when you have people that feel spiritually, because music is a spiritual thing, believe it or not, so deeply as we do, and you turn that music against them, we accept it as spirituality. We accept it as super emotional you know, energetic stuff that we, you know, we rely on, that we, we find passionate. You know, people love their music. You listen to it every night, listen to it every day. And it's something that's just a part of our life for people who really love music. And they took that and they corrupted it, which is what they do. So it's telling you here that the experiments was done and these people took control of music. Now, many, many people will be confused about it because you see all these different names as I said before, that own these record labels, but really it goes back to the same people that's running the country, that, that's running the government. It's the same people. So the point of all this, the whole reason why I brought this out is for you to look at the events that has been taking place over the you know 
few decades, especially lately with the whole Popeye's chicken sandwich thing. You need to understand, again, they play commercials with music in the background to influence you. They're played at certain frequencies at the 440 hertz to control you, to make you want and seek after the product. Now you consciously, when you watch the commercial, I'm not buying it. We all say it. Well, it ain't influencing me. And then later on, you'll find yourself, ah, let me go get it. Because it happened to many of you who went out and got that damn chicken sandwich. You probably said to yourself, I'm not getting that. I'm not going to touch that. Oh, well, wait a minute. The Popeye's line is super short. Let me go see what's going on. Or let me just go see what's up with this chicken sandwich. And a lot of you people don't even understand. It's not even chicken. It's, it's genetically modified. It's a freaking clone chicken. Like it, The meat is not even something you should be probably eating. Like anything that's going to cause somebody to be stabbed to death over, I don't want no parts of it. I don't want no parts of Popeye's, no way. Burger King owns Popeye's. Burger King been killing people just like McDonald's. And um, to have it exclusively, you know, put to black people is crazy, which is one of the reasons why I was hoping like, damn, like we need to not buy this chicken sandwich. We need to leave it alone because they're trying to make it exclusive to us. And when they do that, that's telling you it's not good. It's telling you that it's probably something in that chicken sandwich that you shouldn't have. And um, it's the same thing with music. You eat the sandwich, I feel fine, I feel great. Not knowing the lasting effects. If a person is going to Popeye's and getting chicken or willing to stand in line for a chicken sandwich, this is probably a person that is easily controlled. This is probably a person that is not really up on their health and it's going to eat or put into their bodies and minds stuff that's going to be harmful to them. And the overall impact, the lasting impact of that is going to lead to their death or, you know, lead to their, to, you know, they're being controlled to do something else stupid. So what's in that sandwich mixed with something you could be eating later on down the line could be building up in your body and lead to a heart attack a few years from now. Who knows? But make the connection. We have mass hysteria with the chicken sandwich. You have mass hysteria with these musicians. And we have mass hysteria with these trends. It's the same stuff. None is different from the other. It's just the chicken sandwich one is just more, you know, stupid. But I don't see it being any more stupider than the ice bucket challenge and all those other trends that people don um, to just fit in or to follow the trend. So it's controlling people. And usually when we see stuff like this, it means they're trying to keep our attention away from something else that's happening. And it means you got to pay attention and look deeper at what's going on because America's attention right now is on damn chicken sandwiches. And we've seen videos, it's not just black people, it's white people fighting. You got white people calling people niggers, getting beat up outside over chicken sandwiches. And it's crazy. It's mass hysteria. Um, it's one of the reasons why, you know, I put out this type of information, but, you know, I've I, I received a lot of emails and people wanting comments about the whole situation and people asking my input on the whole thing. And it's like, you know, if you're if you're conscious, you get this stuff. There's none of this stuff should be shocking to you. You need to understand you shouldn't be surprised by nothing that these people do. They're trying to kill you, plain and simple. They're trying to control you. They're they're not going to do anything beneficial to you. And, and it's crazy because it's like black people sitting around waiting for it to happen, for something to just change or something to happen, or you know, people not realizing that they're going to work until they're old and they're going to die. Plain and simple. That's going to be your story. That's going to be how you go out. You're going to work. You're going to get too old. By the time you realize, damn, I should have did something else. It's going to be too late. And you're going to end up sick with diseases and you're going to fucking die in your house or die in the hospital broke and poor because you chose the trends over consciousness. Because you chose to follow what's cool and what's popular over waking the fuck up and realizing that you're stupid. Plain and simple. You're a fucking idiot. Look in the mirror. That's you. The people who's following these trends. If you're not following these trends, we're not talking to you. But that's what's going to happen to the majority of black people. And they understand this. They're weeding out the weak-minded. They only want the intelligent people that has the consciousness, the mind, to move past the stuff and to move forward and defeat all the trends and the reason for that is you know what i talk about in a lot of videos but um we not you know many black people and um if you're going to mix in if you have to mix in with 
black people, you want the best and brightest. Those you can easily control that is easily manipulated, you want them out of here. And that's what's happening to a lot of people. And the crazy thing is, it's not them. It's not, it's not people's own decisions, yet they believe it is. So, you know, we see this with Christianity all the time. Like, you'll see a celebrity, a uh, rapper or somebody, post something on Instagram, you know, something about faith or something about Jesus and praising God or something like that. And in the comment section, you'll see a bunch of people saying, Amen, or I needed to hear that. And it's clear as day that these people don't read the Bible, not understanding that this person that's talking about God and everything like that is continually sinning. His whole, you know, page is dedicated to sin and going against what the Bible says you should not be dealing with. And how are you a Christian following this person? And clear as day, this person is not a Christian. But when they say something spiritual, you know, they say something about God, it's, you know, amen. And that's something that's mental right there. And... I was uh, coming out of, uh, if you're on the West Coast, I don't know if they have Albertsons on the East Coast, but they have Albertsons over here uh, on the West Coast. Ran in there real quick. Uh, grabbed some paper towels, some, some other stuff. You know, I'll go. But coming out, a lady come up to me. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, praise God, and all this stuff. And uh, I said, you know, I don't believe in Jesus. And she's like, you don't believe in Jesus. Oh, it's okay. You know, she asked me for some money, of course. She thought the God stuff was going to get her some money. And, um... Now, I had no cash. So um, she was like, it's okay that you don't believe in God. And I think uh, people should be allowed to believe what they want to believe. But let me ask you a question. Why you don't believe in God? Do I don't believe in Jesus. I said, there's no proof for him. I said, you know, we have been, our people, she's black. I look, our people have been praying to Jesus for hundreds of years. What has he done for you? What has he done for you? And this woman smelled horrible. And it's like, you out here, you got to be in your 50s, 60s. Um, smelling like that and you praising Jesus like he's where is he where has he been in your life look where you are you know and um, we had a little mini debate back and forth but she kept her faith She, you know I'm not going to renounce my Jesus and Jesus loved me and this and that okay and this is the mental illness that you know religion puts in people and it's control and it, it's in many different forms whether it be a music or TV or just the programming that we have passed down to each other genetically, you know, with this religion. So my point in this and putting this out is to get you guys to understand one. You know, when you see people doing this stuff and you take your phones and you point at them as looking stupid and we all been over social media talking shit and everybody been putting out videos about how dumb these people is. You need to understand one. Don't beat your people up. Not too bad. Understand a lot of people are mentally weak. They are controlled easily. And it's not something to be super ashamed of. It's just they're not conscious. And it is what it is. It's the same thing about, you know, even well, homeless people. When I see homeless black people, the reason why I'm quick, you know, if I got cash to give them money, we, I mean, we've been through so much. It's, you just never know. Um, we got to help our own people out because we've been put through the ringer and we messed up because we just don't know. And at the same time, we're also being controlled and our thoughts are not our own. Our actions are not our own. And a lot of people, in hindsight, you know, sitting in them prison cells or sitting in poverty or whatever, thinking like, why did I do that? Like, what the fuck was wrong with me? What did I do? You know, and when you really dwell on it and think about it, like, what the hell would push me to pull that trigger or to do this or make this decision? And they will, a lot of them will never come to the conclusion that it was the music. They will never come to the conclusion that it was not really them and that music has influenced them to destroy themselves. And it's still happening today. And, you know, we see it with music. We see people like, I mean, I see it all the time. I know people that's in their 40s still trying to, you know, have a rap career. Late 30s still trying to have a rap career. Trying to get people to buy their mixtape and so on and so forth because they believe they still got it. They believe they can have a you know, a lucrative music career in their 30s and 40s. And a lot of times it's because they believe they have no other way. It's the only shot they have to be somebody and be, you know, wealthy. And um, really they want to get in that position so they can just, you know, shit on y'all and, and, and tease y'all. So it's crazy. So a lot of these rappers talking about keeping it real and they work for the government. It's just that simple. They work for the CIA. They are agents, every single one of them. And y'all glorifying these people and big upping them and, um, you know, they're destroying you, as I always talk about. And you have a lot of the, you know, comedians on social media making little videos about the chicken sandwich. 
a lot of people, I mean, it's a joke to a lot of people. This is our reality. This is this is what we doing, what we doing now. We find entertainment in our own destruction, as I always say. But um we are controlled. They are controlling you. And one of the reasons why I push for knowledge and education is so you can have the right consciousness to defeat a lot of the stuff that's going to be your downfall. A lot of people are not going to make it. A lot of people are not going to end up where they want to be. They will never realize they dream because they don't have the mental consciousness, the capacity to do so or to even to, to wake up from the control. And it's, it's a sad thing. But um, the more knowledge you put in your brain, the more the more you realize, you know, one, how fucked up shit is. But two, how you start breaking stuff down and how you start seeing, you know, the matrix, the code, the pattern. And you start seeing um, what's going on here. And this stuff will just jump out at you more and more. And, you know, it's not no different, this chicken sandwich craze from music crazes, from seeing people faint when they see Michael Jackson and these celebrities and screaming and so on and so forth. It's control. It's mental manipulation. And they can, turn, they can turn it up if they want to. They can make it even stronger. But it has to be subtle. And it's very subtle. And, um... This is choice. It's one of the ways you can influence choice by putting stuff out there and persuading influences. Remember, this is the power of Satan uh, influencing you a little bit. And it's enough to, you know, garner favor with your consciousness. And that's basically speaking to what you want anyway. Chicken sandwich look good. It looks tasty. It's pleasing to the eye. I'm going to seek after it. So on and so forth. And then, you know, your, your own downfall. We do this with a lot of stuff. We make bad decisions based upon our greed, based upon what we want, selfishness. And we're not thinking about the outcome. You know, you pull that trigger because you're selfish. You're not thinking about your life. I had a friend, I talked about this before, who who got killed. You know, he smacked this young bull. Young bull left, came back with a gun, shot him three times, killed him. Now he's in prison for the rest of his life. Sorry, because he can't take a smack. He had a long time to walk away and think about it and come back. And in that time frame, he still chose to come back with the gun in front of a bunch of people and kill his man who was so loved. And now, you know, he's done. And it's like, what type of mentality did he have through that whole process that allowed him to come back and do what he did? What type of mentality does people have to get up and decide or, you know, sit in line for a chicken sandwich? The car, the lines of cars here in Vegas as well. The cars is like around the store for a chicken sandwich. What kind of consciousness is that? What's wrong with people to do such a thing? And people, we just laugh. That's what we do now. It's entertaining. We just laugh at all. I just wanted to try the sandwich. Like it's a joke. It's serious. But I wanted to give you guys a history and an understanding that the government controls your music. They are controlling your mind. They own the television networks. The same people, same system. And you need to wake up. You need to understand what's taking place and educate yourself and be aware of what's coming. 2020, yeah, something is coming. War, something. It's not a coincidence they took the show 2020 off. Remember that TV show 2020? Something I'm going to get into later and explain what's up with that whole thing and what 2020, the significance of it is. But, um, and not nothing super scary, you know. They can't do nothing like they, don't, they can't do nothing super crazy because of, you know, the and y'all old conspiracy theorists for that. The, the conspiracy theory consciousness that's out there, they have to tiptoe around it. So it's not going to be nothing super crazy. Um, even though like a mass shooting or a bombing or something like that would be super crazy, it was it's going to be something that affect those people. And uh, believe it or not, they they're chosen for a reason. Again, something I'll get into later. But um, again, uh, pay attention to what you getting yourself into. Leave these trends alone and stop following this bull crap. And um, again, uh, take advantage of the sales. Again, the 21st will be the date. If you don't have your book by the 21st, that will be the date. The 12th, we won't have. I won't be able to get all the books produced and put and shipped out to everybody. We got to do it in sections. But it won't. Nobody will not have their book on the. Uh, the 21st and all you people that pre-order if any, any of you guys still wait you would get your books first of course so um that's going to be taken care of and um again apologies for the long delay will be worth the wait 600 page book people complaining about the prices 609 pages um and it costs that amount because of what the book is it's nothing like it it just is what it is and the price is actually going to go up so i tell people to get it now because it's a limited copy 
uh, and limited production, I should say. And it's not that many uh, copies we can print out. That's something I still have to abide by with the 5,000, which I'm trying to get that up, of course. But the book is going to sell out. It's going to sell out. So $100 is a fair price. And that's after tax. It's really only $89. Uh, after tax, it'll be about 100 or something. But um, yeah, you'll see when you get the book. It's definitely um, a really good book. It's over 45 pictures. Um, that's really important to the book and it's stuff that I really fought to get to, to get in the book a lot of the pictures I mean they didn't want to let me have them there's a, a site where you can go to to get copy uh, write free stuff and free pictures but of course when you're doing something like this not many pictures of what we talk about exist for free you know if you understand what I'm saying but take advantage of the sales um, definitely Check your emails for your tracking number and stuff like that. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. And I appreciate your patience and support. See you guys next video.